what time it is. It's time to go and visit a different type of brain. We, we've understood square brains. We have understood what a square brain is. However, it is time for us to engage with soup brain. Yes, that's right. We are going to engage with the soup brain of Matt Walsh. We haven't watched with, we haven't checked in on Matt Walsh in a bit. So we know- But that I we want to. I want to. Wow. Next. Well, that was easy. This is why I'm glad the eviction moratorium expired. How fitting. How motherfucking perfect. How motherfucking perfect for what we've been talking about all today. All right, everybody, here we go. As anyone who has watched my channel will know, we regularly check in with um, severely sedated, conservative, um, I would say all-star, but I don't think that's very fair, conservative guy, Matt Walsh. Uh, today, um, just two days after the federal eviction moratorium expired, which will inevitably result in a wave of homelessness and death in the United States in Amer of America, Matt Walsh is here to tell us why he he's happy that the eviction moratorium expired. And I have a feeling he's not going to be completely honest, because if he was truly honest, he would just say um, he hates poor people and wants them to die. But I don't think he's going to say that. I want to find out what kind of bullshit thing he's going to invent. Now, here's the thing. You might be fresh to mash Matt Walsh, but we aren't. We've been watching Matt Walsh for a long time. Matt Walsh ha has had such incredible takes as children bo children's books that teach people what the word gay means are child abuse. He has had such takes as children should not have their consent respected. I am not kidding you. That's actually a real take. He, he jokingly refers to himself as a theocratic fascist. Yeah, um, Matt Walsh is a piece of shit, and we like to take the piss out of him because he deserves it, quite frankly. So, without any further ado, now that I've introduced you all here, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Of course, seriously, I do a fucking great stuff for you. Uh, let's watch. Next year, the CDC's eviction moratorium uh, Jesus, has expired. Dude. That was the rule passed down by our overlords of the C CDC saying that landlords. Already. All motherfucking ready. We are not even eight seconds in. And it's already the most dramatic nonsense you can possibly imagine. Im Let's go are not allowed to evict people Jesus, who don't pay their rent. Now, how in the hell does the CDC have the authority to make a policy? How do they have the authority to make any policy? Let the Center for Disease Control, and we are in the middle of a pandemic, which is a disease, a disease that is spread by people living in unsanitary and crowded conditions. So actually it makes quite a lot of sense that the CDC would have the power to stop evictions during this time, actually. It actually makes quite a lot of sense. Let alone a housing policy. Well, nobody ever quite explained that. The CDC never explained why. I, I just did. Housing is important so that you don't get sick, especially when it's a respiratory disease that spreads like fucking wildfire. Where they get this authority from, but they found it. Or rather, they just claimed it. That's what tyrants do. They say, oh, you know, that's, what do you mean authority? I, I have the authority because I'm doing it. That's why I have it. Um, Again, and just so that was the policy giant been in drama place for months queen. now. And then Massive drama queen. Congress didn't extend it. And now the socialist wing of the Democrat Party, which is otherwise known as the entire Democrat Party, is playing the blame. <laughs> How, like, I don't know. Like, remember when I say that they will always, they will always call every Democrat, anyone who's not a fascist, they will call a socialist. Like, it's funny because 
they say that all that lefties do is call everyone a fascist. But in truth, literally, the only thing conservatives do is call everyone a communist. Fucking Alex Jones calls Joe Biden a Chinese communist. That is just nonsense. In game. Um, first, here's AOC a few nights ago in the middle of the night saying that she was marching to the Capitol to demand that the moratorium be extended. Uh, this, this, I think, is pretty frightening. This is kind of an insurrection that she, you might say, that she can... How does anybody take this guy seriously? This is the most fucking weak shit. Is this supposed to be an own? Is that supposed to be a fucking own? Like, oh, she went to the Capitol, which is where she works every single day, and decided to make a public state, a peaceful public statement? That's an insurrection? It's so motherfucking stupid. Just how do you even, like, how, oh, God, they, these people are so self-serious and dramatic. It's unbelievable. It's so pathetic. How does this sell to anybody? It's so pathetic. Conducted on her own. Let's watch this. Hello, from Washington. It is about 11.24 right now, and I am walking to the Capitol because Congress is, allow is about to allow the National Eviction Moratorium to expire at midnight tonight. And they're forcing the moratorium to expire before the emergency rental assistance money has gotten out to renters and mom and pop landlords and so i'm heading out over there because sister cory bush has called for us to come out there and call on congress to bring their butts back so that we can vote to extend the moratorium true ashmar it's not just me and it's not just representative bush but we've done a call and lots of everyday yeah. people are starting to Hell show yeah. up on the capitol steps demanding that we extend the eviction moratorium. Silax says, him calling this an insurrection is part of the warping of words that fascists do. Yes, obviously. It's so dramatic and ridiculous. Um, it is it is beyond uh, any any possible, uh, r like, si like, like, sane interpretation. It is patently bad faith. They want to make the words mean nothing. For them, if words mean nothing, that is fantastic. Because the alternative is to allow almost 11 million people 11 million. to be at risk of eviction starting midnight tonight. Look at that. That is, uh, that's, that's terrible. Storming the Capitol. That's not fucking storming the Capitol, you drama queen. They were literally peacefully standing to the side, not obstructing anyone's ability to get in, and just making a statement. You are pathetic. What cuck pathetic behavior. Literally quivering in his fucking boots. An insurrection. It's worse than 9-11, honestly. Um, but it's the, the, the eviction moratorium. She's saying it's, it's, it's coming to an end. People are going to be evicted. It's going to be a crisis across the country. Yeah, it is. And that might actually yeah. happen, where, where lots of people lose their housing. Because um, they've been told for the last many months that they don't have to pay their rent. And, and, and no, dude. No. They they haven't been able to pay their rent, you fucking idiot. Dude, Matt Walsh is so motherfucking stupid. He's not even like he's not even good as a propagandist. He's so stupid. Like the idea that they were told they didn't have to pay their rent. No, you get heckled if you don't pay your rent. A moratorium just means you can't be evicted just because you meant to miss a rent payment. And that was never going to last forever. It couldn't last forever. And so by giving people, waving your magic wand and giving millions of people the right, quote unquote, to not pay their rent. You're not giving you them a right to not pay their rent. These people are now in debt, you idiot. You absolute fucking idiot. God, I hate people like Matt Walsh so much. I'm sorry, I'm losing my shit. But this is so un- I knew it. I knew that he wasn't just going to come out with it. He has to come up with arguments that are so stupid as to be insulting.
They're just factually wrong. No one has been told they don't have to pay their rent. They're in debt. They're in fucking debt. You have set them up for this, AOC. You've set them up for what's about to happen. But we should say she was on, on CNN later a, after storming the Capitol and um, and uh, uh, conducting this insurrection. It's not storming the Capitol. The it's not an insurrection, you fucking cuck coward. You little baby. A bunch of people peacefully protesting on the steps of the building where Cori Bush and AOC work is not fucking storming the Capitol. You're fucking stupid hooting and hollering hogs smashing each other's heads in with flags bashing out the windows is storming the Capitol and you fucking know it. CNN talking about this and she doesn't blame the Republican Party. She actually blames the Democrats. Let's watch that. Democrats control the House. You guys control the Senate. You guys control the White House. Nothing aggressive was done by leadership mm -hmm. uh, until just a couple days ago. Who's to blame here? Well, you know, I think there's a couple of, of issues here. First of all, you are absolutely correct in that the House and House leadership had the opportunity to vote to extend the moratorium. And there were many, and there was frankly a handful of conservative Democrats in the House that threatened to get on planes rather than hold this vote. And we have to um, really just call a spade a spade. We cannot, Hello, famous in horse. good faith, blame the Republican Party when House Democrats have a majority. Now, there is something to be said for the fact that this court order came down on the White House a month ago, and the White House waited until the day before Hello, the Rose. House adjourned to release a statement asking on Congress to extend the moratorium. Conservative Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. That's the funniest thing I've heard. Like Manchin and cinema. Yep. Heard in several days. A handful of conservative Democrats. Who are those exactly? Yeah, it's conser I mean, every single Democrat that you will talk to publicly will say, you know, for example, that men can get pregnant. So that that that's conservative now. That's because they can. And also, I highly doubt Joe Manchin would say that. Conservative Democrats. Uh, but this is a, a perfect example of the faux compassion that you get from the left, and even a lot of people on the right who, who Wait, defend what? these sorts of policies. Wait, what are you talking eviction about? moratorium. If we could put to the side the fact that the CDC does not have the authority to issue- Yes, it does. It does have the authority. It literally does have the authority. Issue such a proclamation in yes, the first Yes, it does, place. and they did. They already did. And it's, it's kind of, you know, that's the law. Okay, the Constitution, it's sort of hard to put that to the side. It's, it's really important, I would say, if we want to be a civilized society um, under, under any kind of rule of law, then, then you, you can't really put the law to the side. But if we were to do that and just talk about this thing on the merits, you, this is horrific, um, counterproductive, stupid, morally deranged. In Like, I don't even think he believes it. Yeah, I don't even think he does. Like, he's sitting here, like, struggling to come up with the words morally deranged. It's, no, you want to know what's fucking morally deranged? When you're in a verifiable worldwide pandemic and you think that the solution is to fucking evict people where they're going to go get sick and, and die. Like I said, from the very beginning... Matt Walsh is desperately pretzeling himself into a position where he can pretend that he's saying something other than I than than what he's actually saying, which is Matt Walsh wants poor people to die. Matt Walsh thinks poor people should die. Sister Rose says, by the way, I really liked your video on CWC. It's pretty much my exact stance on the whole thing. Hey, thank you. I put a lot of thought into it. Moral. That you are telling people that they must, that they are required to keep people in their homes, on their property, who are not paying for the right to be there. Yes. Yes. Because those people cannot get money during a pandemic. Because them being on the street endangers all of us, including you, but you are too stupid to see that. What a perfect freeze frame. What a perfect freeze frame to represent his fucking brain. Matt Walsh having a complete mental shutdown on the idea that if you put people out on the street during a pandemic, more people will die and they will spread the disease to you. That's what the government declared. If you're a landlord um, and there's someone on your, on your property, in your home, 
who is refusing to pay you, refusing to compensate you at all, you must- They're not refusing, they're, in, they're unable. They're unfucking able They're unable! Continue to pay for them to live there. You gotta pay their bills, you're paying the mortgage. You have to pay their rent for them. Wrong. What? You have to pay their rent for them? What? You, what are you paying yourself? What the fuck are you talking? This is so fucking stupid. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, oh my God, I can't do it. Also, fucking landlords are the ones who got the money from the fucking relief packages. They're in debt. and allow them to stay on your property. Yep. That, you know what that is? That's slavery. That's forced labor. What? An eviction moratorium is slavery. Oh, I can't do it anymore. You're being forced by the government oh. to pay someone else's rent for them. <laughs> You're being forced by the government to pay yourself rent for the land that you owe. Oh. It's so ooh. God damn it. I have to mm, God damn it. I have to make sure the peasants get fed for my kingdom or else they'll revolt and kill me. Oh, God damn it. Oh my god. It's like it's unthinkable. It's and yet mil it is unthinkable. You're right. It is impossible to think through this position and come out to the p opinion that M Matt Walsh has, which is why he's lying. What he really wants to say is he fucking hates poor people and he thinks they should fucking die on the street. That's what he really thinks. That's what this guy really thinks. But see, it's he has to come up with words to cover that up. Millions of idiots will defend it on the basis of compassion. Compassion for who exactly? What about the person who owns the house? Owns the property? What about them? You're putting them underwater because a big part of their financial plan here is that, you know, they've got to pay. The they have land. You don't have land. They have land, you idiot. A mortgage on this property? Many of them don't have a mortgage on this property. Do you know that most of fucking America's fucking rental properties are owned by giant corporations? They don't fucking have a mortgage on it. And so And guess what? There guess what everybody? Hold on a second. There's another problem with this, which is that the Democrats are advocating for mortgage mortgage moratoriums as well. So Obviously, they don't actually have a, they don't even have a mortgage to pay because they're benefiting from the moratorium. This is how patently stupid and factually wrong this absolute idiot is. Help them pay the mortgage, then that's, that's, that's why the renters have to pay. It's not, it's not it, you know. Wait, it, most homeowners don't have a mortgage? Most home, homeowners have been covered by the moratorium. Just to be clear, it's not because they're mean. Landlords are, it's not because they're mean yes, that they're is. making no, you it's pay they're greedy. the rent. It's because they're mean and greedy. It's because they're providing Yo, you awesome, with something Simon. with a service and you have to pay in exchange, but also uh, they need to pay. Very often they have bills they have to, they have to pay the mortgage on this property. And if you don't chip in, then now they gotta pay their own mortgage for their home, plus this and however many, and many other properties they own. So you are putting them in a financial crisis by not fulfilling your own obligations. And so, yeah, it's, you know what? It's compassionate if we pretend that the landlords don't exist, that they're not really people. Based. Speaking of forced labor and slavery, if we just pretend that they don't count as people, then yeah, it's perfectly compassionate. It's not all corporations, it's a fucking lot. I've had this conversation on stream a hundred fucking times, Joyful Warrior. It's a huge portion. A fucking massive portion. Okay, watch this, ready? Mm-hmm. 
Institutional investors own a growing share of the nation's 22.5 million rental properties and a majority of the 47.5 million units contained in those properties. Whoopsies! Rental housing finance. Uh-oh! 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 Thank you for suffering through conservative brain rooms for our benefit and everything else you do. Thank you very much, Wake and Jake. Deeply appreciate it. Let's take a look here. ba 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 Where's the paperwork that I did? Ooh, hey, here's a press kit. That would be helpful. We'll find it. Don't worry. Just give me a few minutes. Profile of owners and renters from 2019. Let's find it. I know this information exists. I've looked it up before. Give me a second. I'll find it. I've looked this up a million times before because you people always come in and waste a bunch of my time. Uh oh! Uh oh! Dun 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 dun! Ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba -bum. The majority of the largest owners of apartments in the United States are real estate investment trusts, which are companies who own and usually operate income-producing real estate. REITs were created in 1960 when the cigar excise tax extension permitted investment in large-scale diversified real estate portfolios through the purchase and sale of liquid securities. This effectively aligned investment in real estate with other asset classes. In 2018, uh, there were 226 REITs in the United States who owned combined $821 billion of assets and who had a combined market capitalization, capitalization of $1 trillion U.S. dollars. Sorry. Sorry. 226 fucking investment funds. You fucking morons. You fucking idiots. You fucking stupid morons. I hate you. I hate you stupid people. You stupid fucking pathetic simps. We're continuing. And and again, the the land yeah, there, there are mean landlords out there. Um I, I haven't I haven't rented in a long time, but with my experience with landlords, I had some good experiences and some bad experiences. Um so there are we're not talking about businesses, joyful warrior. The vast majority of these properties are controlled through trusts. Nope. You know what we are talking about? We are talking about a ban. <laughs> Go to bed, loser. And you too. Go to bed, loser. Bye. Bye. I hate people like you. Mean landlords out there. There are bad landlords, sure. But it's still their property. They own it. And you don't have a right to be there if you're not paying for it. Imagine, think, imagine thinking that someone else, some stranger, is entitled. You are entitled to stay on their property without compensating them. You're entitled to it. It's not a matter of entitlement. You are already there. They don't have to pay for their property right now. Yes, tenants' rights exist because, as it turns out, when you're a renter, let's just analyze. Let's just think about this for a fucking second. Let, I just want you to listen for a second. When you're a renter, you're paying to just occupy the space. Eat, you don't get to keep any of it. They keep all of it. When you go, they still own the property. You're supposed to, the idea of renting is that you're supposed to pay less, way less, because you don't get to keep it. They're just giving you the space. But you see, people like Matt Walsh never want to talk about that. Because it's very convenient for them to exploit lots of people. Because they hate poor people. And they would be okay with squat, personally squashing poor people for their blood if it meant that they could make a couple extra bucks. No, Matt Walsh is just a stupid loser who has a giant, who has a giant grift going on, sleepily reciting the exact talking points of, of the Republican Party. Imagine walking into someone else's house, a stranger, you don't know them and saying, I'm entitled to be here. No, you can't kick me out. 
Yeah, good thing it's not a stranger. Good thing it's your literal fucking tenant, somebody who already lives there. That's what Trans girl Lily says most rents are higher now than mortgages and banks are denying people mortgages So they're more dependent on increased rental costs and guess who owns a fuckload of those goddamn rental properties Banks via real estate Investment trusts the thing we just talked about Interesting how that works banks don't give you money for a mortgage So you're dependent on the product that they own the rentals and they also lobby so that you can't get relief. This is what we call wealth transfer. Fucking God, these You're people squatting. make me sick. You're a squatter now and you are... Uh, yeah, you know what? Squatting? Yes. And you know what? You know what? You want to call them squatters? Then they should keep fucking squatting. And I hope they all squat. I hope they fucking... I hope that your properties are infested with squatters. If you're gonna call people trying to fucking live and not have their bones squeezed out from under them squatters, good. I hope your fucking properties are riddled with squatters. Trying to defend your right to squat on this property without paying. It, it, it really is infuriating. And, uh, and, and just so you know, yeah, there are mean landlords out there, there are bad landlords. But not every landlord is some sort of um, fat cat, you know, in his, in his, uh, they're literally called a landlord. They are literally called a landlord. Why do we call them landlords? Office sitting on his leather chair, stroking his, his, uh, his white cat, smoking a cigar, laughing maniacally about all the poor people he's about to evict from his uh, property. Okay, that, that's, that's not the case. That's, that how, that's not how all landlords are. In fact, most of them aren't. You know, a lot of landlords, they're just normal people. You want to know a situation that happens a lot? And this is how, you know, a lot of um, single family homes that are for rent. You can have just a normal family that moves from a house. Okay. And let's say they're not able to sell it or they decide they don't want to sell it. And so, and they move into a different house and they rent out the house they just moved. That person owns two houses. Do you know how many people in America do not own two houses? They have two fucking houses. Most fucking people in America have... You're talking about... You're talking about people who don't even have a house. You're talking about taking away the room from somebody who doesn't even own a house for the convenience of somebody who owns two! Again, remember when earlier he said this is uh, morally deranged? He was correct. His position is morally deranged. It is, it, there is no possible way that you can honestly come through this to his position unless you bite the bullet and say that you think it's okay for poor people to die so that rich people stay rich. Somebody donated bits. Hey, Sister Rose, thank you so much. Sister Rose says, one of the Yank Vulture Funds is buying up properties everywhere in Ireland. My friend is a socialist counselor, Fiona, Fiona Ryan, who managed to defeat them and stop over 50 people from being thrown out onto the street. They literally own nothing, even over here. Oh no, sorry. They literally own properties even over here, so it's not even a case of just looking at American stats with these parasites. Holy shit, thank you for the bits. That is so messed up. Let's continue. Without them. Thank you, Big Orange. These Shoe. are Appreciate just that. normal middle class families. Yeah, there are plenty of normal middle class families, middle class people who are landlords. They're lords. We, we call them landlords because in the past, if you owned land, you would be a lord. You would be a noble. Do you understand where the name landlord comes from? It's because if you owned land in the past, in the past, you would be a fucking noble. And but they don't count. And now you're saying, oh, you got to pay two mortgages now. And if you're destitute because of it, that's your problem. Well, that'd be very convenient <clears throat> if the Democrats weren't also pushing for housing for mortgage moratoriums. And, and, and also, I, I think it, it, it's, uh, 
there's some bearing. It's me, DD says. Actually, they agreed to pay two mortgages by signing up for two mortgages. What happened to Republican individual responsibility? Yeah, notice, notice how they want to pinch down on the poorest people, but the people who are doing perfectly fine for themselves, they want, they want to be completely clean of shit. They vote. These motherfuckers vote for tax cuts for the richest people, even though the richest people are the least impacted by the tax raises. It's, 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 it's just feudalism. Had, this has some bearing on this thing, that employers across the country are begging for employees. Okay, there is not a crisis of jobs not being available. Yes, there is. Because only certain types of jobs are available, and many of the people applying for those jobs are overqualified and can't get hired. Many of the people applying for those jobs have gaps in their resume because of the pandemic and are not getting hired. Many of those people are dead because of the pandemic. 630,000 Americans are dead. Employers are begging for people to come work for them. Offer You can get a- Hey, go get a job, Matt. Go. Why don't you go get a job, you fucking idiot? Ending bonus at McDonald's now. Do your civic service. So who exactly are these uh, these millions of renters who simply cannot pay their rent at all, don't have the ability, can't get a job, can't do anything? It isn't even feudalism. In feudalism, they at least had to pretend when, to care whether the poor lived or not. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have otherwise the peasants would rush your building and fucking cut your head off or kill your knights. While you've got employers begging, saying, "Please come work for us. We'll do anything." Again, no yeah, yeah. actual, no actual argument. This is why I'm glad the eviction moratorium expired. He's glad because poor people will die, and that means rich people will get richer. And interestingly, rich people pay his for his channel. So there you go. Bam. There it is. Follow the money, folks. That's all you ever got to do with these things is follow the goddamn money. That's all you ever have to do. Follow the fucking money. That's it. That's all you have to do. I swear to fucking God. Wow, I lost my shit on this guy. I really lost my shit on this guy, didn't I? This was one of the most painful fucking things. Wow. God, that was extra infuriating.